back to my YouTube channel about HIV and AIDS and surviving hard things. My goal in making these videos is to educate about HIV and women and to face the stigma head on instead of hiding. You can watch my first video, which tells my story of contracting HIV from my husband of 35 years. And I'm certainly not your typical HIV patient, but I know I'm not alone. How do you know if you have HIV or AIDS? I'm sure just asking that question makes your stomach flip and dread fill your body. In my first video, I gave an overview of how I found out. If you're HIV positive, I certainly hope you don't find out the way I did. HIV wasn't even a thought in my mind when I received the diagnosis that would radically destroy life as I knew it. I was in a 35 year marriage and had no reason to suspect this could happen to me, but it did and now I'm divorced. One question I've discussed with the many doctors I've seen is why I was not tested for HIV. I had been fighting for answers to my health problems over the years and had spent thousands of dollars looking for answers. And yet, no one tested me for HIV or even asked if I wanted the test. I don't know what my answer would have been, but at least there could have been an opportunity to enter the discussion. Why is this so important? The absolute key to living a healthy life with HIV is early diagnosis. I believe I was at least eight years undiagnosed, which has turned my life into a nightmare. I was literally dying and no one could figure out how to help. Unbeknownst to me, my friends and family were concerned about my weight loss and how I was feeling. I just knew something was terribly wrong with my body. There are two things to take into consideration when testing for HIV, viral load and CD4 counts. These two tests give information that scientists and doctors use to measure the effects of HIV on the body and to give a diagnosis. <laughs> Stay with me as I explain in layman's terms the type of tests available to determine if you are HIV positive. You may or may not have all these tests depending on your personal situation. An antibody test looks for HIV antibodies in your blood or oral fluid. The only HIV self test approved by the US Food and Drug Administration are antibody tests. And the test will simply be reactive or non-reactive. And that's the information I got from my insurance company when they sent me a letter. Showed me the test that said I was reactive for HIV antibodies. So I, I had no idea. There is a rapid test, an HIV self test, is an antibody test that can be used at home or in a private location. With an HIV self test, you can get your test results within 20 minutes. How do I find an HIV self test? You can buy one at a pharmacy or online. Your local health department or another organization near you may offer free or reduced cost self tests. I have no idea what the cost is. The only FDA approved HIV self test currently available in the United States is an oral fluid test. So another test you may have is the HIV one or two AB differentiation. So there are two subtypes of HIV one and HIV two. Most people living with HIV have HIV one. While both types of HIV weaken the immune system, HIV-2 tends to develop more slowly and has a lower rate of transmission than HIV-1. There's a test called the T-helper cell or CD4 test. CD4 cells, also known as CD4 plus T cells, are white blood cells that fight infection. CD4 cell count is an indicator of immune function in patients living with HIV and one of the key determinants for the possibility of, of opportunistic infection and prophylaxis, which is preventive treatment. So my CD4 count when I was diagnosed was undetectable, not good. Um, so I immediately was put on an antibiotic, which is the prophylaxis, to prevent me from getting pneumonia, which could literally kill me. That's one of those unknowns, but you do what the doctors tell you to. And then I started on the AIDS um, medicines. My CD4 count has risen so slowly. 
Normal human beings have a count between 500 and 1500. Mine was undetectable. So after two years on treatment, I'm only up to 110. They consider HIV patients who have a CD4 count of 200 to no longer have AIDS if they don't have any other opportunistic infections. So are there are things that because you have AIDS, your body can't fight off all these other things. I have tried a bazillion supplements and anything that someone has said, a physician or a pharmacist or a friend, and I have tried it. But my CD4 count is not rising enough. There's the HIV-1 RNA detection and quantification plasma. Y'all, I'm not a scientist, so these... <laughs> I would not have chosen me for the person to teach on HIV, but that way. So just know these tests have fancier names and I'm trying to educate in the simplest of terms. These, this test, the HIV-1 RNA, detect the viral load of the disease. This test diagnoses HIV-1 infection in individuals with acute or early HIV-1 infection. It also monitors HIV-1 disease progression before or during antiretroviral therapy, ART. If you choose to not do ART therapy with the drugs, your viral load will continue to go up and your chances of passing it on to another person become greater. There's HIV-1 genotype, hope I'm saying that right. It tests the resistance by examining the genetic structure of a patient's HIV. A blood sample is taken and the HIV is analyzed for the presence of specific genetic mutations that are known to cause resistance to specific drugs. So if you have this gene, you need to make sure you're on a certain drug that will actually work. This is important because you want to make sure the drugs that you take are working. A CBC test, you've probably had many of those in your life when you've been sick. It stands for a complete blood count and it's used to look at your overall health and find a wide range of conditions, including anemia, infection, and leukemia. The hepatitis A and B test. People who are HIV positive are highly likely to also be diagnosed with hepatitis, primarily type C. This is known as a co-infection. While HIV does not cause hepatitis, nor does hepatitis cause HIV, there is a link through the damage to the liver. HIV suppresses the immune system, making it easier for hep C to enter the body and damage the liver. Okay, that's probably all you can handle. Your doctor or lab may do additional testing for STDs. Yes, the testing is delightful, sarcasm, but it will give you information to help you live a long, healthy life. After two years on meds, my viral load is undetectable. That means I cannot pass it to someone else. When I first tested, as I said, my CD4 was undetectable. Now it's up to 110 and we continue to, when your CD4 count is so low, doctors do not want to do any kind of procedures. Uh, I can't imagine if I had a real surgery, the conundrum they would have because with a low CD4 count, you're so much more prone to infection. And when you have surgery or procedures, you've got to make sure that you can recover from the surgery and not get infections. It's just like this circular thing. And it's just been really hard, especially with COVID. But I have decided not to be a freak about worrying about my CD4 count. I do get tested every three months. I'm always hopeful that it's going up, but instead I'm listening to my body. And right now I know my body is not doing well. I have debilitating exhaustion and other things going on. So I am continuing to investigate. And what I would say to you, whether you have HIV or you have symptoms that you don't know about, or you don't know what's causing them, continue to investigate be proactive. You are the best person to find the right doctors and the right diagnosis. Know that you are not alone in whatever crisis you may be experiencing today. Sending hope and much love to each of you. Mm -hmm.